have a Seattle Aquarium with uh, Kaylee and Andrea. Excellent. And from the Aquarium today, we have April and Justine, both from the Education Department, which is who we are working with on our New Directions project, getting some visitor information about the toddler age group. The mission of the Aquarium is up here in May to inspire conservation of our marine environment, and they do that through their exhibits in the most public way, is the way uh, downstairs with the about there's two buildings worth of exhibits, and we're focusing on three of them. We're also focusing on the toddler audience with their caregivers, which is something that we worked with the Aquarium to figure out who the target of this research should be, since we need to hone in. And that's a primary audience for them right now, because there are a lot of toddlers who come with their parents to the Aquarium, especially in the mornings. We have programs specifically to engage those, that population and their peers of how those programs are working and what else <laughs> the toddlers are doing when they're at the Aquarium. Some background research into both toddlers and tracking and timing, which is one of the methods that we're using, is up here on the screen behind me. There are a, a variety of different ways to do tracking, and we'll get into more of how we're doing ours. But the reason that we want to do tracking is to measure the success of an exhibit. Are people stopping? Where are they stopping? How long are they staying there? And just because an exhibit um, might be moved through quickly doesn't mean it's not necessarily successful, we want to focus on the toddlers themselves, where they're stopping, and what features they are engaging with. All right. So based on our collaboration with the aquarium and um, discussing amongst ourselves where the priorities are, what's really wanted to be known the most in terms of the toddler audience, our evaluation question we're going to be examining this year is which exhibit elements are attracting and holding the attention of the toddler family audience. And we have a couple of uh, words that we have defined here uh, in terms of our study. Exhibit elements are features or components within an exhibit, or its distinct parts. And we have defined some exhibit elements already based on some preliminary observations we've done in the exhibit spaces, but we're also allowing for future visitors to determine and direct our attention to elements that we may not have known were actually an element on their own. Um, and uh, we'll talk about this a little bit more in a few minutes when we go over our observation portion of our study. Um, holding attention of toddlers is meant to be what are they drawn to and the amount of the time they're engaged with those specific areas of an exhibit. So our study is composed of two parts. Uh, the first part is the quantitative aspect of our study where we're doing observations and documenting uh, toddler exhibit interactions. And this uh, is going to include help from the data collection, um, for, or the data collectors of the students who are in the introductory audience research class next quarter. The second uh, part is the qualitative portion. We're doing interviews and we're recording caregiver exhibit evaluations, what the caregivers think their toddlers are attracted to, what they'd like to see for their toddler in aquarium exhibit spaces. And this section is going to be solely done by Kayleen and myself. Um, and we are going to be having not only interview questions, but a picture facilitated exercise with them that I'll explain to you in a moment. So our overall timeline, all of us pretty much have the same timeline here. In the fall, we are going through our development phase. We established our evaluation question, collaborated with the aquarium on where we'd like the project to go throughout the course of the year. And we also uh, developed our instruments for the, both parts of our study. Um, it's pretty much done. We're still doing a little bit of pilot testing to fine tune things, but by the winter quarter, we will be going into the data collection phase. The uh, instruments will be ready to go. We'll have the training of our um, assistants in the audience research introductory class with us. And once all the data has been collected in the spring, um, we'll be doing the analysis and writing up the conclusions and the final product. And we will be presenting that in June at the end of the quarter. All right, this is the exciting part. We get to see all of the instruments now, and if you guys have feedback on that, we'd love to hear your questions. We will be training, as we said, our assistants to help with it, um, and that training is going to have to be in-depth because we have ventured into a, a little bit um, of tricky data collection methods, but hopefully we'll explain them well, but please don't ask me questions if I'm not going through it. Okay, so toddler-focused observations are the part that's gonna happen downstairs in the exhibit spaces. We have three exhibit spaces, and we're saying they're toddler focused because that is the only, only where the toddler goes is what we're interested in. That means the toddler needs to be free roaming, 
that's our, <laughs> our term that Kathy loves. Um, they need to not be confined to a stroller or in their parents' arms because we want to know where that individual is going. Uh, that way they can exhibit the behaviors that we're looking for in part. We're, we know that oftentimes the toddler and the caregiver together make the decisions on where they're going. Uh, we're not getting into why they went to that or anything. So it's okay if in the process of looking at something they're picked up, but we want it mostly to be where the toddler is going, his or herself. Also, in order to keep things consistent, we don't want any public programming happening in that space. The three spaces we've selected don't usually have um, public programming with a specific speaker, the times that we're going to be looking. And if it does, then we won't observe in that spot or go to a new spot. And the three exhibit areas we are looking at are the octopus area, the family activity center, which is downstairs, and the hands-on hallway, which is a dress-up area near the bathrooms and other hands-on items. We chose three because to be able to look for patterns across exhibits, and also these three because they are um, focused somewhat, or at least have elements that are already attract toddlers. And we know there'll be a population there to study and we can see what they're doing. And in the future, go into other exhibits and compare across more exhibits. This is a brief sketch of what the first area looks like. This is where the octopus is in this tank here. It's laid out roughly to the same spatial orientation that it is in the aquarium, but it's segmented into these grids so that we, way we can do our timing of behaviors. Across the top there are four or five behaviors that we're looking for. We defined our stop as an attention stop, which is not how good really Sorrel defines it or anybody else, I don't think, so we'll need to really make sure that all of our uh, trainees are using it the same way. And we needed to do that because a toddler doesn't often or always plant two feet and give focus in one direction. They may be moving and um, they may come back to the same thing and go and come. So we, we know what it looks like when we see it and we, we need to make sure we can explain it well as we're training other people of what an attention stop is. So we do understand that things need more defining. What will happen in these grids is evident on this next page here. This would be a complete day of watching a single toddler. So in each area we're just waiting for one toddler to come through, we watch that toddler, and we'll wait for another toddler to come through. Ideally, we'll have 100 toddlers in each of the three exhibits, but we won't be following them throughout their visit. We'll just stand in one location and wait for them to come back. So here, we have our timings, um, less than five seconds, five to 20 seconds, and so on, up to three to five minutes. If the child is engaged in a certain behavior for that length of time, then you mark the code, the C is for climbing. Oftentimes, kids are climbing on their rocks here. And so for one to three minutes, I noticed a kid climbing. They um, gave attention for five to 20 seconds, and then they must have come back and done that again for another block of time. Whenever they stop doing one behavior and go on to another, then I chart that behavior, but it's okay if there's repetition. The X could even end up on the same one if it happens um, out of order. Every uh, map that we have of the three is slightly different. They have their own little quirks. This one, because there is an animal here, we want to note where the child stopped in relation to the tank and in relation to the animal. This is where the octopus is. It's important to us to know if the stop was because of an animal or if it was for some other reason. Also, this is the tunnel where it's about this high. Kids can go underneath the tunnel, and we want to know if that is something that they're doing because it seems to be appropriate for their age, if that's a feature that might need to be expanded into other areas, something to go under or something to go around or something to climb over. What we're looking for is what, how they're using what's there and then how that can inform what else we might have in the aquarium something. Why are they doing those behaviors? And are we offering an object that they can do those behaviors with? Because kids will make an object into whatever it is they need it to be. Benches have been a lot of climbing features for them. All right. This is the observation form for downstairs at the hands on or the uh, family activity center. Each one of these is a sample, but it's also from our pilot testing. So the information you see here is from a child we observed. It's not made up. In the notes section, we, we want to add comments. This is um, a mother who said, oh, now we've arrived at your favorite part. And the kid went up and wanted to touch the buttons. He even called over to the buttons, I'm coming, buttons. He really likes touching buttons, apparently. Um, and he engaged for quite a while with this. It's a, a touch computer and the mom pulled over a bench so that way he could be tall enough to play on the touch computer which gives orca sounds and maybe other whales as well. But they stayed there for even longer than five minutes. He really enjoyed doing that. Because 
we've noticed some areas where the kids stay for a prolonged amount of time, specifically at the spelt board. We added the extent here. That way we can really get an idea of just how long they're staying. 25 minutes in a single spot doing one activity is quite a while, and we want to be able to note that because that seems to be um, of significance if they're staying that long. We also have some areas that have no object, you may have noticed, because perhaps something is of significance to the kids that we haven't recognized ourselves yet. So each page has a spot for something else that maybe they are drawn to, and then we can add that in as we go along. That's it for the maps, but I'm happy to explain something further while the maps are up here if anybody has a question. You'll see the O up there is for other, and that would then be described down in the notes. Um, in the circle of jellyfish, for example, there's an area where I've seen quite a few kids who like to jump up and down and try and appears like they're trying to break the glass. Um, that's not something we have listed as an activity, but if it's an other, they, our observers would put an O and then just describe what other activity they were doing. And I think that's all of the features on there. Mm -hmm. Can I just ask yeah. a quick question? I just can't get over this 25 minutes. Yes. It was great. He was categorizing all of the felt pieces into what other things were similar to the, those pieces first based on the actual shape and color and everything, and then he'd get a new piece, and now it wasn't in line with anything he'd seen before, so he had to come up with a new categorization. Oh, well, I guess it's the same length as this, or I guess it's the same color, and this is, of course, my going into his mind for him, but he was really <laughs> excited about it, and his parents kept trying to drag him away, and he told them, no, he was working here. <laughs> and I love that, that he said he was working, and th this is where we have the stool as well. Um, there's little stools to sit on, and the number of kids who use the stool and then stay at the stool for a prolonged period of time might be a significant feature. I'd love to just do an, ex uh, an experiment here where we're, stools or no stools, how does that change people's So when time? something like that happens when the parent says, let's go, and the kid mm -hmm. says, I'm working, are you documenting that? Yeah, okay. exactly, in our notes section. I, and it's hard, at first we had talking on here as well. If they pointed to it or if they talked while they're at the exhibit, it seemed hard to track that without being too intrusive and being too close to them. So we'll probably miss some of those comments, but that particular comment would definitely get noted that I'm, you know, I want to go, no, I'm working here. Yeah, and those, that kind of extended time would definitely be something to note because there might be a follow-up study here on those yeah, absolutely. times. Well, and, and so far what we've noticed from our preliminary, our pilot testing, um, that's not that uncommon to yeah, spend that much time there. And maybe people at the aquarium have noted that yeah. too before. Um, so one thing that we may be running into, although I don't really know if I'd want to call it a limitation because that's potentially really extraordinary at this spot, but because it's so much time spent, we may have a smaller sample size there. Yeah. But just you're gonna something to think you're about. You're going to have an interesting other for that. Yeah. <laughs> just pounding. Pounding. Yes. These kids pound on it because it sounds like a drum. It's really loud. Yeah. Like a drum. And so you'll oh, be standing somewhere else in the building and you'll just hear the oh, oh, oh. <laughs> The, um, a gravity wall at the science center, you know, where you can put the slats in and roll the ball down. Yeah, and kids will stay at that for half an hour. It's, nice. There's just a couple of activities that, that are, there's just so much focus that they can put into it yeah. that they really will stay Absolutely. hugely longer than at other Which I love, and I wonder if there were some things that would attract a parent to stay longer, that there wouldn't be so much dragging away from that. If there is not just a kid's area, it included something for the parents to be doing. Just a, um, one comment. I love that what, what you said about <clears throat> trying to develop a way to look at how much time toddlers spend, because it's not something that you can you can't necessarily take another definition that's used in another setting or with a different target audience. And and I think when we've been looking when we first began to look at our exhibits that focus primarily on very young children, um, and I think that I did find a little bit in research into um, early child development in terms of measures that people use, but but I think in the museum field, it really is a gap. So I think it's really interesting that you guys are thinking about that and that you're so, that you're conscious of the fact that you really want to be able to reflect the data, including developing instruments or a method of using, of reflecting it that doesn't exist. Thanks. So, um, I'm going to move on to the uh, qualitative portion of the interview. So we can definitely go back to the observations at the end if anyone has any more questions or comments. Um, so for the second part, 
the part that Kayleen and I will be doing um, solely is the qualitative interviews and we're going to be conducting these at toddler time uh, the caregivers who bring their children to this program um, and it's going to be coupled with a, a card sorting task a visual exercise and um, toddler time for those of you who are not familiar with it is a monthly morning pr uh, program for toddlers in the upstairs classrooms of the exhibit or the aquarium excuse me um, there's a lot of different stations for them to go to it rotates from what I understand lots of art projects books you can touch certain program animals that are there. Um, it's a really engaging space, and there's a lot of repeat uh, visitors who go specifically for toddler time. Um, because this group of people is a part of our intended audience, the focus of the study, and they, they have had a lot of experience with the aquarium in general already, we really wanted to get to this group specifically for the qualitative portion of our study. Um, so it is a homogenous sample. Um, but we really think that their quality of answers are going to provide a lot of additional insight in, to supplement our observations. So um, once the adult enters toddler time with their child or the, the child they're taking care of, um, we will approach them. But we may wait until they have time to settle down with the toddler, they get, the toddler gets engaged in an activity, so that way we'll have a higher response rate. And, will also get better quality of responses. If the toddler is running around still, it's kind of hard to have them really sit down and then spend a couple of minutes with us. So we're hoping to get about 40 interviews, if possible. Um, so then that way we'll be able to see strong trends and patterns that are showing up in responses from people. Uh, although that may be smaller, just because there are a lot of repeat visitors and we don't want to uh, interview the same person twice to skew our data. So um, these are a couple of the questions that we're going to be asking, and it's very toddler focused. What does the aquarium provide for a toddler that attracts you to visit? Uh, when you visit the aquarium with a toddler, where do you spend most of your time? So we're, we're trying to get a qualitative aspect at what's holding attention, what's attracting an exhibit element. So it's still getting back to our overall evaluation question. Um, this is the card sorting activity that we've developed. Um, still kind of working it out. We're going to a couple of toddler times this next week. And we're actually going to be trying to use the iPad as well to help us um, record our interviews and also maybe even convert something like this onto the iPad if it will let us. Um, Kayleen went around and took some awesome pictures of different elements that um, tend to show up around the aquarium photo opportunities. Uh, the felt board that is so popular already, <laughs> and the uh, different types of signage, buttons, things that, that we've already defined as exhibit elements that, that toddlers have already seemed to be attracted to in our pilot testing. And so what we'll be asking them is, um, are, I am, as the caregiver, more or less, or more interested and less interested in my child engaging with these exhibit elements. So at this point, we're still talking about the toddler, but we also do want to know a little bit more about well, what do you want for your child, just not, not only what is your child attracted to. Um, and we have about a dozen or so pictures. They're not going to be using all of them. We're going to ask them to pick just a couple to put in each category. And I tested this with the printed out photos on the ground. And what ideally, the first idea was to put it on a board and have the parents come up and manipulate them. But oftentimes the parents are sitting or nursing or doing something that we don't want to have them transition to another space. So we just did it right there on the floor, which is why I think having the pictures on the iPad and having them be able to sort that way might be the most convenient. Um, and this part we also want to record because why they're putting things in the categories is something we'll have them explain aloud. That way we can get at, well, that's interesting. You put an information card on both sides, something you do want to see more like and something you want to still you don't want to see as much of. And that particular mother said, well, it's not really getting the information, of course, but he really likes to spin that star. And so again, it's getting at, okay, more physical movement is where this kid's going. Same with the push buttons um, for the listening orca. He just wants to keep pushing buttons. So. And hopefully our, our goal is that not only do we get a visual representation, but a lot of people are very visually stimulated. So having these pictures to kind of help draw out even more response and maybe get more to the heart of what people already enjoy and maybe would like to see a little bit more. Kendra? Yes. What is the center section of your Venn diagram? What is that? <laughs> that would be the neutral area. You want to see more like this, less like that, and then if people 
like the option of, oh, well, that convergence spot is always both the, well, that it's okay, but that's usually where a lot of discussion comes up. Or now that we're changing it to an iPad, there might not be a central, it might not be Venn diagram looking, it might instead just be columns or charts. We haven't explored what to do on the iPad portion. We just tested it with physical pictures. Are any of the pictures going to be things that you know that they don't pay attention to? Can I hear them talk about why they don't go to that? We, this is one example of things they don't use, as is the bookcase downstairs. Um, neither of those, at least in the times that we've been there, have been used by the toddler audience. Which isn't to say they're not used by other audiences, and they should be removed. That's not what we're trying to get at. But those two features we have not seen used at all. Um, we wanted to limit it to a dozen, but we should, we should certainly do another walkthrough to see if there are other things we should add. Because absolutely, why you don't use it is yeah. just... why this is all important for the aquarium, besides that they are interested in audience research and they want to learn more about the toddlers, is to provide a baseline for when changes occur, which have happened in the past, and the education department would like some way to support their case of why these things are good, or why they need more like this, or where money should be funneled um, to improve the felt board. People are using it a whole lot. Well, if we had two felt boards, that would double the number of people who can use this thing, which is really interactive. Minor changes, like having a stool. If we have a stool here, people use it so much, perhaps. And those things aren't, won't be definitive from what we study, but might give a, uh, an idea of where to head and then be able to test further. It's always good to have the baseline and be able to compare across exhibits, and then when you change something, you can use the same study again and see if it's making a positive difference or not. Um, along with changing exhibits, it might influence toddler time itself or um, probably a million other things that the aquarium itself can think of. We've already talked to people who want to take any information we have, especially some of the quotes, and use them for publicity or for talking to the CEO about why this audience is important. I think it has a, a lot of usage. Any questions on anything? Yes, Justin. Do you know what days you're going to be doing observations in? Are you going to try to hit every day or weekdays? For the toddler time stuff, will be Mondays and Tuesdays for the interviews. But the observations downstairs, we want it to be times that we know there'll be a lot of toddlers. We don't want to send out our observers and have them not get very many people, um, which again means Mondays and Tuesdays mornings. We know there are a lot of people that come through Saturday mornings. We know there are a lot. We are probably not going to do afternoons because of nap times and transitioning to home. So mostly mornings, and if you guys have more ideas of days, that would be great. Do you think we should spread out or just focus on a couple? That's what we're thinking. Maybe impossible to track, but um, I have a nephew. The family has a membership, an annual membership they renew every year because there's a toddler. They go back uh, twice a month, and so I would be interesting to see if there's a difference between the one-time use versus, you know, consistent visitation. Because I see my nephew stopping at different things for different lengths depending on, um, you know, because he's been to it yeah. through it so many times. So I don't know if there's any way. To use right. That. We will upstairs be talking to the caregiver and say how often downstairs we won't be talking to them but you're absolutely right up when we speak to the caregivers they do say well it has changed over the last few months as he's developed into this type of stage of his life and so those things will gather from them but not from downstairs so, yeah, are you guys going to be recording about the animal behavior at the animal exhibit space when um, they're engaged with the animal yes on the slide there that had the a and the x um, with the Octopus is active. We've noticed a whole lot more right. stay time as you would expect, and yeah, um, we want to put that in the notes section that it was moving or cracking open a clam or whatever. It's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. On this same interaction, if you've got two stops and one of them you can see is marked with an animal, do you indicate? I mean, probably it's the you know longer stop, but do you indicate which stop it is? If it we weren't going to, but we could. We didn't want it to overwhelm the takers. We need to experiment more and see if it's going to be too daunting. But absolutely, we, we would make that assumption, but we wouldn't want to make that assumption if we're not noting it. Um, so it might be best to go ahead and, and mark you know, the longer of the stays. in what you're saying.
said about how to um, sort of get the attention of caregivers for your interviews, and I wonder if you've thought at all about doing something to cue them as they're entering that space, and then um, doing a, a later sort of follow-up intercept of do you, now that your child is settled, did you get this card, or did someone talk to you, or you know, to kind of, I wonder if that would mitigate your refusal rate for chasing a small child around. Which is nice, I actually had zero refusals, which excellent. is excellent. Um, but if that becomes a problem, that's a great way to you know, let them know that something might be happening if they would like to participate. But everybody was delighted to help, which I was surprised at because I did interrupt quite a few nursing mothers. <laughs> like, oh good, yeah, talk to me. <laughs> they wanted something else to do at the same time. Uh, but they were stationary, which was helpful. So I could 